This is Big Potato 5, and this is my first video response, and it's also my first uh, video in the vlog style where I'm sitting, speaking in front of a camera. Um, and today I'll be talking about the purpose of life. Um, this seems to be a pretty important issue with people. Uh, a lot of people consider it one of those big questions. Uh, people often think of it as rhetorical, unanswerable. Um, and maybe even a little cliche. I think it's uh, actually very important and uh, answerable. Um, and it might not be important for the obvious reason. The key to understanding the purpose of life is understanding the, the way the human mind works. You have to understand that when you perceive something, what you see or what you perceive isn't actually the, the object itself. It's your mind's impression of the of the world around you it's an abstraction the human mind is generating this abstraction by a complex process of synthesizing and compartmentalizing and generalizing behavior and um, it's a very effective way of testing the uh, structure and consistency of the world around us but it's still an abstraction it's not physically there. So one of the ways the mind does this is by assigning purpose to things. And uh, the purpose can seem so inherent to the object, to us, that we can forget that it doesn't physically exist. For example, let's take uh, an apple. Uh, what is the purpose of an apple? Now the purpose could be to make a pie, and uh, that's only if your goal is to make a delicious treat. Uh, the apple could also serve the purpose of um, uh, transporting seeds in order to grow a new tree, and that's if the goal is to uh, acquire more apples. Neither of those things are inherent to the apple itself, but it's so useful for us humans to view it that way that we do it all the time with everything we do. So what this means is that purpose is completely relative for everything. Uh, so if we continue this example, the purpose of an apple will be different to a chef than it will be to a farmer, or a nutritionist, or a biologist, um, and will still be the purpose will still be different depending on the specific context. This is also really the same. It's it, it's also true of the purpose of life in the sense that it's completely relative, and uh, depends entirely on the goals of the person who is uh, being assessed. If you are a religious person, the goal of your life is presumably to get into heaven, which means that the purpose of your life has to be to serve God. Um, because religious people believe that you go to hell if you don't make this your purpose, it becomes imperative that everybody make their purpose in life the same. Many religious people take this to mean that there can only be one purpose in life, and anybody who does not make their purpose that specific purpose must have no purpose in their life. And that is completely false. I have many purposes in my life, and not a single one of them involves God. If my goal includes getting paid well in my job, my purpose is to work hard in school and to get a good job. If my goal is to have kids, then my purpose becomes one of becoming a father. You could ask me, what's the point? Because it seems like there's no point to this. And uh, you'd be right, there is no point. It's, it's actually best that way. Life is precious because it's the single chance that you get to do, you get to make whatever you want out of it. So I seek to make the world a better place for my kids because that's what's important to me. And it's completely subjective. If I didn't have a say in the purpose of my life, especially if I had an eternal afterlife to look forward to, this life would be completely stripped of its value and would truly serve no purpose. And that's why I find my lack of religion so liberating. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to pose that question to you. What is the purpose of your life? Peace.